Hello and welcome to another video tutorial series on lazy automation. This one we're going to be looking at how to use uh, Cucumber JS with Selenium. Cucumber JS is Cucumber, obviously, but using JavaScript. So what we're going to do first is just go through the stuff that we need to get started. We're going to need Node. Just to point out real quick, I'm using a Windows machine here. If you're using a Mac, it might differ slightly. It will differ slightly. There's no two ways about that, but I'm sure if you follow along, you can figure it out. If you know how to install, if you're, if you're watching a tutorial on web automation, I'm sure you know how to install stuff anyway. But let's go through Node first of all. It's pretty easy. You can just go to nodejs.org, click on the download button. That will download a file which looks like this. Double click it and we're just going to install that according to the defaults. Automatically install necessary tools that include, we don't need that I don't think. You don't really think about stuff until you start doing it in a tutorial. You just blind, well I do anyway, to a certain extent. <laughs> you blindly do stuff without thinking about it until you have to explain it to someone else. There we go, we've got Node installed. The other thing that you're going to want to install is an IDE. I use uh, JetBrains for everything, so I'm using WebStorm uh, because I like WebStorm and the workflow is good and it's a very intuitive IDE. Um, and you, it does a lot of stuff out of the box so that's what I'm using so if you want to follow along with the same IDE you can use WebStorm as well you can download load that from jetbrains.com or if you've got a preference you want to use VS Code or something else go ahead but obviously some of the things that I do might differ slightly um, you can get it for free on a trial for like 30 days I think and then if you like it you can always pay for it Okay, right. So that's where we are now. We've got, uh, I've already got this installed. We've got an IDE. We've got Node installed. So let's just check everything went according to plan with our installation. So we just open up a terminal here. You can see I've already done that, done this once. But if we type in Node space hyphen V, you see that you get your version number for Node, which means that you've got Node installed. Everything has gone according to plan. So what we're going to do next is open up the IDE. And when you open up WebStorm for the first time, you'll see a window a bit like this one. So what we want to do here is I'm just going to create a new project and I'm going to call my project Cucumber. You can call yours whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call mine Cucumber and click Create. And we've got an empty folder here called Cucumber and our project files, which currently there are no project files. So just to check our ID is all good, I'm just going to create a file, call it test.js, it's a JavaScript file, and then to check that everything's set up all right, I'm just going to do hello world. So I'm just going to log out to the console, hello world. I'm not teaching you how to write JavaScript by the way I'm kind of assuming that you already know a little bit of JavaScript before you came here if you don't it might be worth going off learning a little bit of JavaScript and coming back again uh, so we've got a JavaScript file here in this ID we can run that in a number of ways we can either run it from the terminal by typing when you open up the terminal you're already in your project folder there so we can just type node space and then the name of the file which is test there you go, that runs the file that way. We could right click the tab and run it from here. The little play button, that also runs it. Or if you click this play button up here, that will just run the last thing that you ran, which in this case was this test file. If you click it again, it runs it again. So we're all set up now, I'm ready to do something a little bit more interesting. Uh, so in the next video, we'll go through opening up a browser and interacting with it with Selenium.